Hello, my sweet shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week I share Kinda Shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now this week we are going to have some fun with thrifted items. I've just got so many fun things here that we're going to be painting and we're going to be doing several different distressing techniques as well. We're also going to be using some crackle glaze. Now I tried to use objects that I believe are pretty easy for you to be able to pick up at either garage sales or also thrift stores as well. So we've got a lot to get painted, so I'm going to go ahead and get these projects started. So first up is our urn, and it feels like it's maybe some sort of styrofoam material. It also has a lot of wonderful little details there that are just really going to pop when we use that crackle glaze. I use the Valspar weathered glaze for this. I've always had very good luck with the Valspar. I'm not going to keep this, but I am going to keep it at the moment because it's going to make a good handle for us to use to paint with. When you use your crackle glaze, the more glaze you put on, the more crackle you are going to achieve. I want this to be heavily crackled, so I am just really going to load the crackle up on this item. But I will also come back and make sure that I smooth out some of that so it's not pooled in these areas. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to set this over here in the floor. I do have another drop cloth here. I'm going to set that over in the floor and let that dry. I am going to let it dry for one hour. So I'm going to set a timer. I am immediately going to go and wash this brush because you don't want your crackle medium to dry in your brushes. So let me go do that and I'll be right back for us to start painting some of our other projects. All right, next up we have various candlesticks and we also have a silver bowl. And I have painted silver before. I'll link that video for you below. But painting silver is a whole lot of fun, guys. And then this one, nah, this is probably from the 90s, y'all, because it's got that palm tree detailing and some acanthus leaves and all of that jazz. So that was probably from the 90s. So I will be painting all of these in the Rust-Oleum Chalked Linen White. I really like the Rust-Oleum. It sticks. Oh, let me pull that back so you can see. It sticks really well on so many different objects. Now our silver is going to need two coats. With the first coat, you just want to put it on there. Don't worry about opaque coverage. Usually these little cups can come out. Do you see the little candle cup there? These are for tapers. Oh goodness, I just broke the whole thing. Rut row. I'm just gonna glue that back in. I'm using my quick grip. All right, so we're gonna let that glue set up, but I can paint this one. And a lot of these can be painted probably a little more easily with spray paint, but I'm just not a fan. Then I just come back over and smooth everything out. Now this is going to just be stunning when we get this one distressed. And I just swirl and get that paint on there and then I'll come back and smooth everything out. With your first coat, you just want to get it on there. You see I missed a spot right there on that little candle cup. Because I am going to be using my white paint again, so I'm just going to stick it in the Ziploc bag and that way it won't dry out on me when I go to put the second coat on everything here. All right, gals, moving on to our little vases here. These are gonna look so good when we distress them because they already have lots of little character. This has some fluting on it here. This one has almost like cut glass detail. And then this one is just full of lots of minute ridges. 
because we want those details to stand out, we're going to be painting it a dark color first because if I just painted white on this and then distressed, it'd be a little more difficult to see those details. So I will be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle to base coat our vases. Then when we go back, and put our white paint over it and then do distressing, that is just gonna bring out those details just so beautifully. I'm gonna put these on my little Lazy Susan. They'll actually be easier to paint that way. Okay, our timer went off and it is now time for us to put some paint on top of that crackle glaze. When you put your paint on, you don't want to overwork that paint. Don't keep going back and forth over an area. You want to just put the paint on, leave it alone, move on to the next area. And it'll take a second for the crackle to start to appear. Because of the detailing on the rim here, I'm actually just kind of dabbing the paint on, not really even brushing it, just to get it into those details and to get the surface covered with our paint. This grass makes a really good handle. Now, as I'm coming around that, the crackle starting to appear there. Oh yes, looking good almost really dabbing all into those details. If it were a flatter surface, I would definitely be able to take my brush and apply it in a brushing motion. And I think that looks great. Lots of good crackle on that. And you'll definitely be able to see it when I get the close-up styling beauty shots, but that came out exactly how I hoped it would. So we're gonna set this aside. And again, we're just gonna slap some paint on there and then we'll come back in and smooth things out. And these details are gonna look so pretty when we get those distressed. And the silver pieces that I use, they are not high quality pieces. They are just pieces that you pick up at the thrift store. Definitely nothing that is a family heirloom. So we're going to let this dry and then we'll get some distressing done on that. So I'm gonna go off camera and put a second coat on these. I'm also gonna go outside and spray these with a coat of the Matte Clear Poly. If I don't seal in the brown, then when I go and put the white paint on and distress that back, it's just gonna make a muddy mess. And then we'll come back and go on to our next project. Well, all of our items are dry, so we're getting ready to add some distressing to these pieces here. Then we are going to be doing just a little more painting. I know we've done quite a bit today, and we're gonna paint these pumpkins and make ourselves a cute little topiary. Then once we are finished with that, we will be using this beautiful bucket and we are going to be creating a nice muted neutral arrangement for fall. So stick around, we still have a whole lot of fun left in this episode. For our first method of distressing, we're going to be using just some wet wipes. These are just some that I picked up from Walmart and we are going to be distressing our silver and I've already started on this section right here and you can see how pretty that is and compare that to that section right there. And basically all you do is just take your wet wipe and you're going to rub that over the high points of your design. And as you rub, it is going to remove paint off of those high points. I take my thumbnail and rub it along the edge there, at the top as well. You can see that just looks so pretty. So I'm also going to hit those fluted edges as well. And I'm gonna rub them very gently at first. I don't wanna take off too much. Look how pretty that is. I will finish the rest of this off camera and it's gonna be so pretty when we get that all staged up. I have already started a little bit on this one right in here and that is our sandpaper. This is very heavily designed so I'm only going to have to use some 320 which is very fine grit and when I take that across those designs it just instantly takes off that paint. 
Look how good it looks already. And if you even don't want to distress it all, just put some wax on there to seal it and you are good to go. The design that is very fluted right in here and in here, you will be able to use your fine grit sandpaper and that will be no problem. But for these sections here, the section is flat. Your paint is usually going to adhere to that a little better, so you'll need a medium grit to take that off. We'll use our fine grit on these areas here. Doesn't take a lot of pressure at all to just bring out those details. Isn't that pretty? I always keep a brush handy as well to just kind of dust that off so I can see what I've done. If I take my medium grit on these areas here, very gently rub over like that, and I would use the fine grit on the corners because it doesn't take much effort to take the paint off of those corners. Nothing that you paint has to be distressed. It is all personal preference. Again, I'll be off camera and I will just finish distressing all of these pieces. I also use the wet distressing technique to distress the glass vases as well. Look how this has just that gorgeous little basket weave on there. And then when we wipe over it with our wet wipe, it just takes all of that and just brings out that detail. And then this one has all of that cut glass detailing look on it. And when we start wiping that back, look how cute that is. When you do the same paint color and the same distressing technique, they start to look like an intentional collection and not just things that you've randomly picked up at the thrift store. I will just keep distressing these items and we'll move on to our topiary. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get our pumpkins painted. So I will be using the Craft Smart in Deep Peach that I get from Michaels. And then from Walmart, I'll be using the Waverly Chalk Paints in the colors Celery and Cashew. I'm also going to start by removing the stems from these pumpkins. And I save these because they can be used in other projects. And this one is going to be the top pumpkin in our topiary. And for that stem, I'm going to be using this knob. Isn't that going to be so pretty? I am going to paint the bottom, even though most of it's not going to show. Nice shabby chic color, but just also a nice little pretty color for more muted shades of fall. Well, that looked like great coverage, but you never know. We'll see. I can't believe how well these paints are covering today. I usually don't have that much luck. Well, we found our first candidate for two coats. This is not going to cover in one coat. Wonk, wonk. And now while all of that is drying, we're going to be putting some moss in our topiary to cover up that bottom. I'm just pulling this out, getting it into workable, manageable pieces. So I'm just going to start loading up some glue here. Load it up with some more glue right in here. Add another section. Looks better already. Didn't that turn out great? Look at that crackle on there, guys. Oh, yes, please. I love a good crackle. That's gonna be so pretty. Let me clean up my moss mess, and we're going to put some wax on our distressed pieces that we had done earlier. Waxing your pieces is as simple as getting some wax on your brush. I do like to work it in to the bristles, and then just in a circular motion, just go around your piece, making sure to get into all of those crevices. And this is the clear wax. You could use white wax. You could use distressing wax with the uh, antiquing wax. I would suggest though, if you're going to use antiquing wax, to put on a clear coat or a coat of white wax first to avoid too heavy of an application of your dark wax. I'm gonna let that tack up for a minute. And then after we get all of our wax applied, 
I'll go back in with another rag and buff it all off. And this is going to offer protection for our paint. We did all that work, so we want to protect what we've done. And instead of using the wax, you could spray these with a polycrylic, or you could even brush on a polycrylic. But I find that just taking a brush and rubbing them down with some clear wax is just as easy. But it is just a personal preference, whatever is easiest for you and whatever you have on hand. I think that one's my favorite. Love that woven texture on there. So pretty. How gorgeous did that turn out? Ooh-wee, I love that. Oh, isn't that dreamy? The cute little feet, everything on that I just love. And now I am going to go off camera to wipe all of these down, but basically I'm just going to take and wipe off the excess. I just take my shoe shine brush and literally just buff it just like that. And it gives it just a nice little soft sheen when you do that too. So that's what I'm going to be doing to the rest of these. And then we'll come back and get our topiary done. So we are now ready to assemble our topiary. Center this up and then push down. Bring that up a little bit so you can see the rest of it. Place that there. What I'm going to do first is put some glue around these edges here underneath so it's not going to show. Then I'll go back in with one of these skewers. And then our last one. Isn't that lovely? And take my skewer and just run it down the middle just to provide some extra stability. Oh yeah, much better. There we go. And look how pretty that is. I'm not going to glue that on. I'm just going to push that down into that pumpkin. Look at that. That turned out really great. Now for our floral arrangement in our bucket. As you can see, this thing is really big. So there's really no way to put enough in there to fill that up without it costing you a fortune. I'm not sure where I picked this little basket up. This could be a Dollar Tree basket. But what I start is reusing some floral foam. Let's see how wide. Right there. I always save packaging because now we're going to stuff that all down in there so that floral foam stays in place. And now we're going to take this bucket and put that in there just like that. Now this is going to give us a great place to put our flowers in. It fills up the bucket. And that way, we don't have to worry about spending $500 on florals for this. Next up, we're going to take a smaller grapevine wreath and place that around the top of our bucket. That's also going to give us a nice area to put our florals. Then I took just a section of one of these garlands that I pick up from Hobby Lobby and we're going to put that around the outside as well. That way we have just a nice, big, beautiful base already. We wouldn't even have to put any florals in that if we wanted to. We could just leave it like that, put a pumpkin in there, and call it good. But I want to use some florals to give it some height and to give it a little bit of drama. So I have an assortment of various greenery here, and I love these hydrangea as well. Most of these came from Walmart, but some of them were from Hobby Lobby and also Dollar Tree. And I like to start by just placing some of that lamb's ear all around the rim. And having your floral foam in there makes it so easy. 
and I love this big bunch right here. And I'm actually just going to fan that out and put it at the back. Then my Dusty Millers. I'm going to add one over here. And then fill in with the other one right here. There we go. Then my Eucalyptus. Looks good so far. Well, that's where I'm going to have to stop today because I've got to go get some dinner on the table, but we'll be back tomorrow to finish up our arrangement. I just love how it's looking so far with these soft greens. Just so beautiful. I am now going to start adding some things in here for height. I pick these up at Walmart and when I buy them, these are actually straight up. Well, I don't like that. I always bend these little heads down because when you have hydrangeas, you're going to notice that that's kind of how they grow. And then we're going to just play around with our leaves and just start where we think we're going to need some height. Let me turn this to me so I can see the front. And I think right here is going to look good. And one more right in here. Okay, that looks pretty balanced there. I have some of these Dollar Tree Mums. Little mums poking out here. I think that's cute. These are also Dollar Tree. I think I want some of these hanging out. And that basket is way down in there, so I'm going to have to rest this on another one of my florals. So I like how that looks. I have taken some skewers and I have skewered some pumpkins. I think a pumpkin would look good right in here. Maybe another one right here. Let's try that. Maybe one more little one right in here. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I've also stemmed, I've got some Sola wood flowers. For your Sola wood flowers and also for your other little pumpkins, if you don't have the skewers, just take some of the florals that you have, take the top off, and then you can use that pointed section there and then carefully find the center with your scissors and just kind of work a little hole in there and then you can take that and you can put your pumpkin on there like that. So to stem your Sola wood flowers, all you do is take your skewer, put some hot glue on the pointed end and put that in your flower. You want to hold it until that glue sets and that's all there is to it with that beautiful. And if you don't have the skewers, it's the same process using one of the stems from your old florals. That end with glue. Insert that to the back of your flower. Usually about a quarter inch in will hold that. And you want to hold it until it sets. Let's pop that in right here. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'm loving that. I may want to use that. That's pretty. I like those leaves and that color. That may work perfectly right in here for us. I think that looks really good. Push my pumpkin down in there a little bit more. You could add as little or as much as you like if you wanted. Like I thought these little white sprigs were cute. Those would look pretty tucked in there. I'll tuck one in there. Yeah, we'll tuck a few of these in there. When I start doing this, it's hard to stop because I just love making it just look so full. I like it looking full. And this is the Dollar Tree White Lilacs. 
You can add as little or as much. Just keep fluffing and keep playing with it. And move things around. If you don't like where something is, take it out and put it somewhere else. So now all I have to do is get everything staged up and show you how cute all of our projects turned out this week. I hope you enjoyed the hack that I showed you of creating beautiful floral arrangements in large containers and that you'll give it a try. My idea for creating floral arrangements is just simply to throw everything but the kitchen sink at it until you're happy with your results. There are no words to adequately express how grateful I am that you have spent a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate you. Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then, my sweet friends, be blessed.